On March 11, Chinese lawmakers approved the country's 14th five-year plan and objectives for the next 15 years. Often described as the country's development blueprint, the five-year plan is arguably one of the most important programs of action in modern China. But why? This is Shimo Special. The five-year plan for economic and social development, to give it its full title, is in fact a series of documents which have been released regularly since 1953, each featuring new or updated goals, tasks and strategies for the years ahead. The first few iterations of the plan predominantly concerned industrial and agricultural growth, such as setting specific production quotas for steel and grain. Today, as the country has transitioned from a planned economy to a market economy, its five-year plan has evolved into a macro strategic guideline with increasing scope, incorporating areas such as welfare and green innovative development. I came to China in 1981, so I've watched and participated in China's transformation. So by having a five-year plan, it allows China to allow the market to do what it needs to do, but at the same time, there is a structure, foresight, a focus for looking more at national need, social aspirations, uh, environmental changes, and economic challenges, and looking at it in a far more long-term way, have far more sustainability. During the preceding 13th five-year period, China eliminated absolute poverty. This achievement edged China ever closer to its first centenary goal of building a moderately prosperous society in all respects. The 14th five-year plan for the 2021 to 2025 period, therefore, will lay important groundwork as China enters a new development stage and works to achieve its second centenary goal, to fully build a modern socialist country by the middle of the 21st century. It's for this reason that long-range objectives running up to 15 years in the future accompanied the 14th five-year plan. So what are China's priorities for the next five to 15 years? Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the document. The plan lists major targets and maps out 17 areas crucial to China's innovative, coordinated, green, open and shared development going forward. Whereas in the past a specific growth target was included, this was absent from the 14th five-year plan. As the country transitions to high-quality development, the plan states that China should keep its economy running within an appropriate range and set annual growth targets according to circumstances. That's not to say the plan was devoid of concrete targets. The pursuit of homegrown innovation remains at the heart of China's modernization. Alongside a focus on the domestic economy, opening up will continue and the real and digital economies will see policies to fuel growth. In terms of social development, the aging population, employment, rural areas, education and social security were among areas earmarked for more support. This is going to be a very exciting period of development in China. We do see opportunities in areas like data centers, new energy vehicles, semiconductor chips manufacturing, green and smart city, etc. This is an area where a uh, foreign and local company can jointly work together. There will be more focus on stimulating domestic consumption. So this will also mean, okay, more opportunities, okay, for uh, other country to also sell good products to the China market. How is the plan formulated and does it reflect the concerns of those who call China home? Each plan is around two to three years in the making. This includes a mid-term review of the preceding plan, as well as extensive research and the collection of suggestions for the next one. The reports and findings feed into a proposal by the leadership of the Communist Party of China, which guides how the plan is drafted and its focuses. It's then handed over to a drafting group, which creates the document before finally being submitted to national lawmakers for review, revision and approval at the annual legislative session. 
As mentioned, advice and opinions are gathered from officials, specialists, academics and the public throughout the process. Han Ren, a teacher in Tashan Ethnic Yao Township in Hunan Province, Central China, attended one symposium headed by President Xi Jinping last year and voiced his concerns about rural education. Zhongshuji 实事无事去要着力解决教育资源不均衡的问题 Pan's suggestions have directly informed initiatives to train and support rural teachers and improve education in regions with high population of ethnic minorities. Another example is Li Dian Bo, a grassroots CPC official who works in Pugabu, a small village about 750 kilometers west of Beijing, which has been hit hard by the flight of the younger working age generation. We have Last August, Lee submitted his proposal for mutual help for elderly care through an online portal that collected comments on the 14th five-year plan. Uh, uh, Mutual help for elderly care was incorporated into the plan under a chapter concerning the aging population. They have very specific ways via surveys, for example, at the local level to survey the citizens and ask what do you need, what do you want, what are you happy about? They assess at the local level, at the municipal level, at the provincial level. That is a process that slowly boils upward. They don't form policy by deciding what the billionaires need. They form policy by figuring out, finding out from the citizens what, this, what they need, what the society needs. And that's the root of what these five-year plans are. The process of China's decision making is one of consensus building. It takes longer to come to a decision, but when that decision is made, you have buy-in from everyone because they've been part of that process. Now, as the plan has been approved by the NPC, what comes next is implementation, which is where ministries, local governments, different sectors and the public come in. Local governments also produce their own five-year plans to outline how targets will be hit. Implementation across the board is monitored, reviewed and reported regularly. 规划落实之后的话，会出台一系列的政策来进行执行规划，它背后都蕴含着很多有含金量的重量级的政策。五年规划还会分解到年度的规划，一环扣一环，共同推进这个规划，朝着一个激烈的目标去迈进。in short, the 14th five-year plan and long-range objectives offer insight into the ambitions and goals of the world's second largest economy. Yet, ratifying the plan is just the first step of many in China's journey to becoming the stronger, greener, more open and innovative country described in the plan. Now it's time for the real work to begin as guidance is put into practice and targets become achievements. See you next time.